Seattle Children's first opened its doors more than a century ago with a small children's ward in Seattle General Hospital. Four years later, Children's opened a 27-bed hospital on Queen Anne Hill. Polio and tuberculosis were among the most common diseases treated. Now they're going to a new one, and they're eager to see what it's like. It wasn't until the hospital moved to its present location in 1953 that it had even a one-room emergency department. In the following decades, doctors and nurses treated emergencies in just two small rooms. Then you began to see relatively rapid expansion. We uh, had a new expansion in the mid-1980s, and then that pretty, fairly soon was not adequate. That was doubled uh, in the 90s, and then now we have it on both sides of the hall in a fairly significant uh, uh, area, but we're growing out of space. Though Children's provides the best pediatric emergency care in the region, the current ER, built in 1993, wasn't designed to accommodate the growing number of patients who need it. <laughs> patients like eight-month-old Caleb. We're in today because initially he had pulled his feeding tube out and he was having a hard time breathing. Caleb has biliary atresia, a life-threatening disease of the liver, and desperately needs a liver transplant. His doctors say he won't make it to his first birthday without it. Is that better? Caleb's fragile medical condition means frequent trips to the ER for emergency issues. All the problems are compounding, and the closer we get to his liver failing, the more problems we're going to find. So there was like a lot of blood, and so I just called 911. 19-month-old Tori has a genetic disease that requires many cranial surgeries and a tracheotomy tube. That tube came out somehow. Tori was rushed to another hospital that wasn't equipped to handle such a specialized pediatric emergency. So she came here. The ER at Seattle Children's had the equipment and expertise to take care of it and made it look easy. Today, doctors and nurses treat nearly 40,000 patients in the ER each year. Many of those have serious medical conditions and rely on the unique expertise that Children's ER provides, especially at night and during weekends when other resources are not available. Visits to Children's ER have increased more than 30 percent in the last five years alone. Population growth, medically complex and fragile children, and a difficult economy that limits access to health care are taxing the current ER that acts as an important safety net for children who need it most. Current physical space constraints can impact all children who need ER services, especially during busy evening and early morning hours and during the high-volume viral seasons. If we have a breakdown in our primary care system, we're going to be using emergency rooms more and more. I'm concerned with this current budgetary problem that actually access to primary care is going to decrease and the need for the emergency room will increase. If you add to that, a children would have very complex problems or acute problems and our desire in society to make sure these children survive as quickly as possible and do as well as they possibly can. You need emergency services for that. Get a good idea of how fast he's breathing. With support from the community, Children's will move the emergency department to the ground floor of their new building, named Building Hope, where it can expand to better serve the growing number of patients coming through the doors.